Today is shopping day for the Martins. Sue and Jim have come with their parents to buy some things for a party. How much food will they need? That question, much, is an important one. Let's see how the Martins answer the question of how much as they use different kinds of measurement in their shopping. Sometimes we use general measures, such as small size or large size. For example, mother wants to buy a large melon. Usually, it's pretty easy to tell a large size from a smaller size. It's the larger one mother wants. What about the next item on mother's list? Four large sweet potatoes. Large size is not a good measure when you can't tell which is larger by just looking. See, Sue has chosen a round, plump sweet potato while mother has chosen one of the long, thin potatoes. Which one is actually larger? To answer, we need a more exact measurement to decide which is larger. Let's think it through. We could measure by length and width, but the shapes are irregular and hard to measure this way. The more accurate measure would be by weight. Weight quickly tells us that the long, thin sweet potato is the larger by weight. So measuring by weight is one way we can be precise and exact. Sometimes we may have to compare standard units of measurement to be precise and exact. Oranges are often sold by the dozen. When we measure by the dozen, we're measuring by number of items. Here, a dozen oranges costs 79 cents. However, oranges are sometimes sold by weight. Today, five pound bags of oranges are selling at the same price as a dozen loose oranges. Dad thinks they'll get more quantity for their money buying a dozen oranges. Jim thinks they'll get more quantity buying five pounds. Who's right? Let's compare the units of measurement. If we measure by number of items, we see that the five pound bag contains 15 oranges. More oranges than in the dozen. But by size, the oranges in the five pound bag are slightly smaller than the others. To measure exactly, we must compare the five pound bag with the weight of the dozen loose oranges. So the dozen loose oranges, weighing almost six pounds, will be the better buy for the Martin family. In this case, the problem of how much was answered by using units of weight as a measure. Let's remember, though, that there are times when weight is not an exact enough measure. Liquids, for example, are usually measured not by weight, but by the volume or amount of space they take up. The basic unit of liquid measure is the fluid ounce. But fluids may be labeled also in gallons, quarts, and pints, as well as fluid ounces. This bottle contains one pint and eight fluid ounces. Mother and Sue are wondering, though, will they have more syrup if they buy two of these one pint eight ounce bottles or one of the larger bottles? Sue is remembering what she knows about the units of liquid measurement. If we measured the syrup, we'd find that the total amount of syrup in these two smaller bottles measures 48 fluid ounces, while the syrup in the large bottle measures only 32 fluid ounces, or one quart. In this case, then, Mother and Sue will buy more syrup by purchasing the two smaller bottles. Here comes another problem in liquid measurement. For her party, Sue wants to make some fruit punch. This can of fruit juice concentrate contains one half pint. With water added, this will make one and a half pints of fruit punch. Sue has invited six guests, 
if each guest drinks an eight ounce glass. Let's see, that means we'll need 48 ounces of punch. The problem is, how many cans of juice concentrate will make 48 ounces of punch? Sue knows that a half pint can contains eight fluid ounces. We can make one and a half pints of punch by adding a pint of water to the concentrate. One and a half pints is equal to 24 fluid ounces. This is exactly half the amount of punch Sue needs. So it's easy to figure out that two cans of juice concentrate will be needed if Sue is to have enough to make exactly 48 fluid ounces of punch. There's one more thing Sue has to get for the party. Dessert. Here's just the thing. Fresh strawberries. These strawberries are also being sold by the pint. But in this case, the pint is not a unit of liquid measure. The kind of pint used as a measure for berries is a dry pint, a unit of dry measure. In liquid measure, two pints equal one quart. The same is true of dry measure. Two pints equal one quart in volume. But are two pints equal to one quart in weight? Let's compare two dry pints of berries and one dry quart of tomatoes by weight. The dry quart of tomatoes weighs more than the two dry pints of berries. So fruits and vegetables sold by dry measure are being measured not by weight, but by volume. But Jim has to figure out a problem of weight measurement. He's going to buy some frozen chopped suey to serve at the party. But here's the problem. The large carton of chopped suey, which weighs two pounds and eight ounces, makes 10 servings. It might be better to buy these smaller cartons, which weigh one pound each. But how many one pound cartons shall he buy to serve six people? Jim is thinking. In the large carton, what is the total number of ounces? Jim knows that one pound is equal to 16 ounces. So two times 16 is 32, plus eight more equals 40 ounces of chop suey. This serves 10. 40 divided by 10 equals four ounces. Four ounces of chop suey is an average serving. But Jim needs six servings. Six times four equals 24 ounces. Not enough in one one pound carton. More than enough in two cartons. Way too much in three cartons. The 32 ounces in two one pound cartons will be enough. So Jim puts back the 40 ounce carton and takes the smaller cartons totaling 32 ounces. Knowing how much we're buying then depends on how well we can use the different standard units of measurement. But we haven't seen all the units of measurement used in the food store. Some items such as clothesline are best measured by length, inches, feet, and yards. Still other items, such as wax paper and metal foils, can be measured by length and width in units of square measure. Finally, we have to use another kind of unit of measurement, money. Money in standard units of dollars and cents is one measurement of value. This kind of measurement is as widely used as the others we've seen. Measurement by specific numbers. Measurement by weight. Measurement by length. Measurement by volume. And measurement by size. All measurements are useful tools. They're used in answering the important question of how much. We'll be asking ourselves the question of how much not only when shopping, but in many other things we'll do every day.